Hello again, it's so nice to be with you today and I really hope you have your old easel set up and cover the canvas with a thin even coat of liquid white as we're gonna build a very nice painting with some big fluffy clouds and lots of nice trees and bushes so let's enjoy I'm gonna start off with a little bit of fill of blue today just tapping some paint on the twins brush Load both sides with paint and let's come up here in the sky and just do our regular crisscross strokes and I really want to paint a nice painting here for you I hope you get to enjoy today's episode and the episodes I'm doing for this season are all out of my imagination, some I've given to some friends and I have painted them some time ago so the reason I am away from YouTube all this time is because I'm experimenting doing different things and at some point I had some minor health issues so I was held back also I had a lot of work to do but now we are here and we can enjoy some time painting now very gently go across the sky, remove the top marks and the brush strokes and let's have some water here today return to my phthalo blue and I'm going to take the little amount of sub green to that but use very very small amount of sub green if you have phthalo green it's even better but Let's come down here and have some water. Just fill the scene. And as you can see, we have breast mixed our color today and we're having lots of different variations here. Let's fill the scene and by making straight strokes here we have some nice water effect as you can see. Always start from the bottom and work upwards. Okay, let's build some clouds here today. We haven't made clouds for a while, I think. So let's spend some time with flat clouds. Let's take a clean and dry one inch brush, but you can use whatever brush you like. I'm going to go through a lot of titanium white and grab the little amount of this is too much. <laughs> let's take some bright red and use the brush the same way you're using it when building bushes so we have a rounded corner up here so let's decide where we want our clouds to be let's start in here and make big circular strokes just like that always remember to come back and reload your brush when necessary and the secret here is to keep your brush moving, this is what it's all about. Now I'm going to take a clean and dry twins brush and I'm going to blend the bottom of the cloud, softening it up, do not touch the top yet. Remove any excess color here, now we're going to fluff it up, just pull and make big circular strokes with your hand. And remove any excess paint. And now very very gently just caress your cloud and that is we have a nice cloud in the sky. And I want to do several layers here today, so return to my white with the touch of bright red, not much. And let's come down here. Remember to leave dark areas in between so we have lots of depth in our sky today. Just paint one cloud at a time and return to my big brush. Soften the bottom here, fluff it up and then caress it. Do the same thing with your fan brush or your twins brush, your round brush, whatever you like. I just wanted to use my old one inch brush today and when I'm saying old, 
I'm having this brush for more than 11 years now because I used to paint as a kid using this technique and I had some equipment back then. I wasn't doing great so I gave up for some years and I kept this as a relic. I also have some more but this one is painting great. You can see the huge difference when I'm using this kind of brush, this, this actual brush I meant, and it gives so many nice effects. I'm always using it for bushes and stuff and today that I'm gonna use the round brush for bushes, I wanted to use it to build nice fluffy clouds and I actually knew they would turn out great so let's come, let's come here another baby cloud here and I have actually touched the canvas here but it doesn't matter let's make it a little bit fluffier you can have as many clouds as you want I really wanted a cloud sky today and look at all these variations here let's add another one I'm really excited when painting clouds this way probably my favorite way of painting clouds is with a one's brush and I always prefer the big brushes because they have lots of hair so you can have so many nice effects going on and remember when painting clouds keep your brush moving don't stay in one in one position blend the bottom the same way but only the bottom, do not touch the top we don't want to destroy it big circular patterns and then very gently caress the entire, the entire area so of another sky and we have a very nice cloud sky maybe change my mind I want some clouds on the other side too and I'm gonna come here and maybe add another one it wouldn't be fair for this part of the canvas to be left out without clouds and once again the same thing very very gently Another last one. And let's have this little bit pinky here. Maybe this one is right in front of the sun, who knows? Okay. Blend it. You know, clouds are free and they really enjoy traveling in the sky, you can have them in whatever shape you like, whatever color just blend it, but if you don't want them, you can leave them out okay, so let's start now some serious work, I'm gonna leave down my brush and I'm gonna use a round brush today, let's take some some sap green here and some Tail of blue and a little bit of dark sienna. Just brush mix them. Just tap in some paint on the edge of the bristles. And just come just come in here and build some basic, very basic tree shapes here. Doesn't matter if you go in front of the cloud. Start from the bottom and work upwards. Just some trees back in the distance. Just tap them out of your brush. Let's have a big one here. But these are far, far away and you can't see much detail yet. Another one here. 
in a small one, who knows? All sorts of trees live back here. Maybe we'll have a nice lake here. And we're starting from the bottom here because we want the top of, the, of these trees lighter. So let's give them some trunks. I'm gonna go into my liner brush with lots of paint, lots of paint thinner. And I'm gonna go into my dark sienna here. And just add a lot of paint on the edge of the bristles and bring it to a sharp point like that. Let's give it a test. Let's go up here and just give some nice tree trunks. And if your paint won't stick, just add a little bit more of your paint thinner. Just do the same thing to all of these trees. And shake your hand a little bit, don't make them all straight. Just add some interest to them. And another tree leaves right here. Just like that. And you can have all kinds of shapes when building these trees. Just use your imagination. Okay. Now let's come a little bit forward. Let's darken the color a little bit. Let's take some more green, some Van Dyke brown, some Prussian blue this time. A little bit of Prussian blue, so way, way too strong. And I'm gonna tap in some paint and let's come forward. Let's have some nice bushes and stuff in here. Just darken the color so you can separate those trees from the ones in the back. Just make this a little bit harder. Maybe there are some other trees laying down here. Variety of color. And I like brush mixing the colors today because we can have lots of different nice effects here. And what I'm doing is just tapping using my big round brush here. If you're feeling uncomfortable with that, there's a smaller size you can buy. And let's have a small lake down here. Maybe there is a lake. And I'm gonna take a twin brush here and let's decide where we want our water to be. So just pull straight down. There's a nice roundish sort of lake here, so. And try to make your reflection make even with what's above. Just pull straight down and just gently go across. And gives us a nice water effect here. Now, I'm gonna have some more tree trunks. This time I'm gonna use Van Dyke Brown with my liner brush. Add some paint thinner. And we've only darkened the color here because we want a little bit more detail. Just add some tree trunks here and there. And this original one just came out of my imagination. I sometimes do not even look at photos or anything. I just start off one session when I'm all by myself and decide how I want things to be in my world so don't be afraid to experiment okay and now let's put some highlights on I'm gonna use I have another one round brush here and I'm gonna go into my cadmium yellow and let's take some of this color it's a nice color I've made and just tap firmly 
and if you're afraid that your pen won't stick, have the least little amount of pen thinner to that. Take some of my other yellows to vary the color and just tap in some paint and come up here and now this is gonna be a separator as you can see we have dark color both in these two places which is relatively the same but now by putting the highlights on we can separate these two areas let's come up here and just touch very very gently with a round brush only use the top corner of that make the bristles bent on your palette and then just touch but we don't want a lot of detail yet because we are far far away but we can see some things so just do not use a lot of paint and do not put all the details you want in there and we can also reverse the brush and have some nice reflections just reverse your brush and put in indications of some reflected trees and bushes in the water but I can also come back to my color and add another layer here, why not? this is gonna push everything back and bring consistency in the painting so just add some small bushes and trees just like so reverse the brush and this is always the same story with highlights and shadows so if you remember your light source and the best thing of all is that only you get to decide where you want things to be in your world this is very very important for me to paint like that because at some point I get to sketch when I can't paint with oils and it kind of brings me stress at some point because I have to stay in the lines and do the right thing and here we're not doing the right thing we are doing what we feel like doing so I have made a reflection as we always do and let's take just a little amount of liquid white and spread it on the palette here and just go across let's build the water lines just build the water lines here, make them as straight as you can and do the same thing to the other side too just like that okay now let's come a little bit forward, let's have big things going on here so yeah I will just I will just remove the loose paint that's in here because I don't want it to run to run into my film paint that I'm gonna build now and I like brush mixing the colors today so let's stick with a round brush here so I'm gonna return to my two inch brush with my one inch brush round brush that I have the dark color and just darken that here a little bit take the little amount of ivory black too maybe take some crimson too, why not and just tap in and let's have let's have some bushes in here I want to save the reflection of some of this water so let's come let's come and paint some bushes And always remember to build things in layers. A nice baby bush here that will probably become a strong, strong tree, who knows. And what I'm doing here is basically tapping in some paint. And I want to reflect that in the water too. So I'm gonna repeat the process here. Decide where you want your reflection to be. Just pull down, and by the time we have the liquid white on, things happen automatically. You just have to pull the paint, it's so so easy. And now I return to my another my other round brush here, and I'm gonna put some nice foliage in here. 
just touch, maybe fan it down a little bit. A lot of paint. Always remember to use a lot of paint and what I'm doing here is actually tapping with my corner as you can see in here. I'm just using the top bristles, varying the color and I'm spreading them. Tapping and let's return to that and as you can see color comes to life. Reverse that, have a nice reflection in the water. And I really enjoy painting using this brush because it gives a different feeling compared to the other to the other brush because it's it has a different shape and you use it a different way. Let's come here. Maybe add a little bit of bright red now, who knows? Oh there we are. Nice red bush here. And each time I'm painting one, one bush, I'm reflecting it into the water so it looks right. Have another small here, I've added some yellow ochre to that. Maybe return to my sub green or calming yellow. Vary your colors, use your imagination. And always remember when painting bushes like that to tap very, very gently. You don't have to use a lot of pressure because if you do, you're gonna end up with mud and you're not gonna have this nice lacy foliage effect and I want some nice colors in my painting today you have lots of nice colors, you can even use browns if you want but remember what season you're painting this is probably got no spring <laughs> I don't know now let's reflect this very very gently pull downwards just give it a good caress in here. Think of these reflections being the beloved ones. Just pull this very, very gently, whisper light. And go across. This gives us the water effect we want, and it's very, very realistic. Okay? And now, in here, I want to take just a touch of Van Dyke Brown. And I'm gonna build something to hold on this. Just a little bit of land here, so the bushes do not fall in the water. Just paint like this. I, I'm doing it quite often because I love doing it. And if you want to see something different, just leave me a comment and let me know what you'd like to see when it comes to wet and wet technique. Now I'm gonna take some white and red and just a small amount of dark sienna to that. Leave it like marble and get off a very small roll of paint here and let's highlight our piece of land. Maybe there are some rocks. And remember not to use any pressure at all when doing that because if you do, you're not gonna have this nice rocky effect we have. And this is how we build mountains too. Okay. Return to my liquid white so I can build some water lines here. And make them as straight as possible. Just like that. And go to the other side too. And as you can see, we have a kind of around this piece of land here. That means that this bush is further away compared to this one. And also with a clean knife you can scratch in some nice indications of small trunks and sticks and twigs, whatever you like. And to the small ones too. And now I'm going to return to my round brush with the light color and let's bring this together, let's build some piece of some foliage actually in front of this one, this will bring all the things together always remember to do that when you're painting stuff like that because if you leave this the way it is 
it just won't look right and we want, we want to have a nice natural feeling so just gently gently touch here come forth and bring it together as you can see and this is also building depth as you can see we have several layers already and now let the fun begin let's have something big here as I told you I'm gonna use my dark colors brush mixing them today let's have a big tree a big tree let's be brave let's go and fall in front of our clouds and if your paint won't stick just scrape off your clouds if you want but I don't want to do this here nice big tree and just add some limbs here I'm gonna make some more paint I like brush mixing the colors today as I told you but if you want you can always use your palette knife as we normally do and just build something nice nice color here smaller tree leaves here give him some arms and I'm gonna come here and maybe add another one some more Van Dyke brown, some Prussian blue whatever color you want let's have something right here small tree here just like so and now we're gonna go up front to these ones and I'm gonna come and just fill this in I want to seclude this lake small pond maybe, who knows build some bushes okay just tap in some paint nothing to worry about it here just use a lot of pressure and use dark paint and try to darken up the paint every time you're building a layer so you can have some depth some variation and it also gives you a nice guideline to know which bushes are first and that also means that those bushes are further away and this is the ones we paint first now let's come here and I want to build some tree trunks with a knife we haven't used a knife a lot today so let's build the trunks that way I'm gonna cut off a very small roll of paint with my knife this is Van Dyke Brown we're using and let's come in here and let's start let's start from the bottom and just touch Just touch and build a nice tree trunk here. Just use your roll of paint, and this is gonna be a nice tree trunk when it dries because you would actually be able to feel the bark. It's gonna be so nice. Give me an arm, maybe give me another one. Just like that. And let's go to the other trees too. Start from the top this time. And reverse your knife here. Give him some arms. And if you do not like your tree trunks, Scrape them off and repaint the shadows. You're gonna have the same process, and this is actually a very nice way of practicing your tree trunks. You can just build the shadows, and we always paint the shadows first because this is the back of the tree. So we normally paint the back of the tree first, then we build the tree trunk, which is the middle, and then the highlight, the front. Now let's take 
some of my highlight color here. This is just titanium white and a little bit of dark sienna. And I'm gonna come here and just pull very, very gently. Very gently. Remember your light source and just touch there. And what we're doing here is just very, very gently tapping with a roll of paint. Just some highlights. And I'm going to do the same to all my trees. some nice indications. You can also add some other sticks and twigs here and there. Just with your knife. Just scratch in some if you want. Okay. And let's build the foliage. Now I'm gonna go into something here and I'm gonna use a lot of paint for that. Let's go into my cadmium yellow and my other yellows. This is Indian yellow and yellow ochre, so I'm just tapping in some paint. And let's come to the big one here and just touch. Just let that happen. And remember to leave dark areas in between so your trees do not look flat. And remember to leave the bottom of the tree a bit dark because there is less light coming through there. And we always want the top leaves lighter because there's the sun going on here. Let's build some happy trees. I just hope you enjoy and don't be afraid to paint using this round brush. Okay, now tell you something. I want to have, I want to have a path in here. But first, let's build a layer of bushes so we have something to hide the trees here. I'm gonna use always the same brush and remember to vary, to vary your colors. But before that, decide where you want your path to be. So let's leave an opening here. I'm gonna build another bush here. Let's take the knife. I'm gonna use the number 10 knife and I'm gonna take some Van Dyke Brown, pull it very flat and we're spreading the, the paint evenly here so we're gonna get a nice roll of paint. Okay, just take a little bit more. And by the time this is far away and we want to come closer, we need to make it smaller in the start and then make it bigger as we come forward. Okay, so let's start from back here and just caress with your roll of paint and when you are coming forward just use a bigger movement add more paint if you need and this is also something that will help you get used to the palette knife give some interest to your but not make it straight. So let's come here and make bigger strokes now. Just make it big. Just like that. Just put in some color. Okay. And as you can see, it's like the path is hidden back here and comes forward and forward. So return to my highlight color and just caress it. Just caress. Be very gentle with that. Make the paint to break. And just come with one go here. And that quickly you have a very nice path, very effective. 
I've told you before I'm quite fond of pots, so I really wanted one in here, so just grab some more paint and let's come here and just bring all this together. Maybe we should bring some other bushes in here so we can hide the path. Maybe the path is back there and you can't see everything, you know, it just appears through the bushes. And from that we can just carry on doing our regular stuff as always. Just paint some bushes. Nice flowered one here, just adding a little bit of bright red to my, to my paint. And now I'm playing through my colors and varying the tones and all this. And if you have trouble making your paint stick, as you know, just add a little, little amount of paint thinner. You can also use liquid white if you want, but I avoid using liquid white to my greens and yellows because it dilutes color and I want a very nice green color when I'm painting like that, so it's completely, completely up to you. Nice variation here and as you can see we're moving forward and having all kinds of shapes and sizes here, all kinds of colors. Just let things float out of your heart and I'm certain you're gonna enjoy yourself. And now I'm gonna paint some more bushes here. More layers. You can have as many as you want. The more you have, the better it is, I'd say. Just remember to leave gaps in between so they don't look flat. As you can see, we have so many variations and we have some darker back here because we have more shadows falling from the trees and all these, so do not fight it. Let things happen for you. Okay. I'm gonna take a clean knife and just scratch in some treats some sticks and twigs here and this adds even more detail okay. we are scratching some nice indications and if you want them a little bit bigger you can use you can hold your knife the other way and as you can see you're getting bigger sticks but I just want to stay with the small ones, I think they look nicer. Okay. Tell something I want. I want a big tree. So let's use let's use a fan brush and use a lot of Van Dyke brown there. Lots of paint. Lot both sides full of color. And let's come here and go go right above the sky. And make a big tree. You can make it as thin or as thick as you like, maybe a little bit thicker as it is very very close to us there and by the time we have one tree why not have a second one so let's come here and drop another one let's give it a little bit of character I like I like when the trees are a little bit crooked so they're not all the same and I only got to realize that from trees that are in my neighborhood, although I'm living in a big city, we have some trees in the pavement and all these that are very, very interesting, very interesting shapes there. And I like putting those in my paintings. So let's take now, where's my liner brush? There it is. I'm gonna go with a lot of paint thinner and let's go into the Van Dyke Brown and use a lot of paint thinner for that. I want to have some strong limbs there. So I use a lot of paint and a lot of paint thinner. Okay. 
Let's add the limbs. And if your paint won't flow, just add some more thinner. As we always do. Just add some interest to your sticks there. And another branch coming from there. Just add some character. Not make them all the same size or shape. Make some bigger, some smaller. Because this is how trees are, but if you want to paint them otherwise in your world, just go on ahead and do that. Nothing wrong with that. Let's visit the other tree. No, it's very nice to have smaller sticks there and then make them all the same. Just like that. And now I'm gonna build another branch in here. Maybe it falls right in front of the cloud and enjoying its company. more paint in and you can spend as much time as you want painting trees like that add all kind of details and if you are proficient enough you can also add small animals in the branches or whatever you want another big branch here and another one that falls right in front of the Okay. Now let's highlight the trunks. Gonna use my palette knife as always and gonna take some more of my white and some Van Dyke brown. Maybe some more Van Dyke. I'm sorry, this is dark sienna, so just leave it like marble and with that roll of paint we're gonna touch. Just touch there. And this is probably the easiest and most effective way to build the bark of the tree. Just like that, just touch. It's very, very easy. And as you can see, we have so much detail already. Go to the other tree and do the same thing. And if you want, you can also come back after putting the bark in and add more branches so they seem that they are on the other side of the tree. Just like that. Touch, touch, touch. Okay. Now let's have some reflected light. I'm gonna use some white and a little bit of fade of blue here. And then a little bit of anti brown. So I'm gonna mix this one a little bit more brown. Make it a little bit darker. This is a sort of grayish color like that, so let's come here and add some reflected light. Just like so. Hope you can see it. Just reverse your knife and do the same thing here. And sometimes if you are left-handed, it's easier for you to highlight things on the left side, but you can do the same thing if you're left-handed by painting on the right side, so it really doesn't matter where your light comes from, it's just up to you what you like to do. 
I really, really enjoy this style of painting because there is absolute freedom in here. Nobody tells you how things should be. The only one that can tell this is yourself, so it's a very expressive kind of art. And I really hope to be an inspiration for you to start painting that way because it's so, so important to feel free in this life. I'm gonna take some more Van Dyke Brown and I'm gonna bring all this together. Just finish the bark there. Just touch. Bring this together. And we have such a realistic tree, a couple of trees actually, in only a matter of minutes. And you don't have to do things as quickly as I do. Just take your time and do things your own way. I'm gonna return a little bit to my highlight color now and just give a little bit more blending here. Can you see the nice effect on the bark? Now I'm gonna clean the fruits of these trees. I'm gonna return to my yellows and greens and just add some nice brushy areas. I'll tell you something, I want some foliage on these trees too. What color shouldn't I add? I think... I think I love the same color. I don't know. I want all green things today. Maybe add some bright red, I really don't know. But as you can see, I have a huge variation of colors going on here, so... Let's just do that. And just touch and see what you have. I want very little foliage there, just here and there. Just tap in some indications of leaves on this tree. And let's do the same thing to the other tree too. Really hope you enjoy it. And always remember when tapping right in front of the bark to be very very gentle because we don't want to lose this nice effect we have. Nice leafy tree there. And a little bit right in here, some more bright red maybe. Okay, and I think we have a finished painting and as I've told you in the previous episode this is one of my favorite because it has so many things to do it's really important to feel nice when you're painting like that so I really wanted to show all the kinds of things you can do with just a couple of brushes and a big knife and if you do not want the trees if you want to change season it's completely up to you I just want to show you the way so I really hope you had a great time let me know how you're doing and until next week, I'd like to wish you happy painting, take care, and th thanks very much for watching. Have a good time.